He's one of thousands of innocent victims of a conflict that tore our homeland apart. Then, ten years later, the Good Friday Agreement brought us peace by allowing both sides to be what they wanted to be, British or Irish. We voted on it by a referendum. And in the EU referendum, we voted to remain because we knew the mess that this would mean for our island. The DUP doesn't speak for everybody in Northern Ireland. No! We don't need an excuse to be divided. We've been down that road before. Yeah, they're ruling us. So Mrs May, if you're listening, we don't want a hard Brexit. We don't want a soft Brexit. We don't want Canada plus, we don't want Northern Ireland minus, we don't want checkers, we don't want checkpoints. And we definitely don't want to take back control of our border. We happily gave that up 20 years ago in order to have peace. Yeah. Yeah. We want to live as friends and neighbours without people trying to drive us apart. It's called the European Union. You should give it a go, Mrs. May. But don't just take my word for it. From across the four corners of the UK, Here's the next generation to tell you why the people's vote is so important. When I was born in Uri in 1995, the city I call home was a very different place to the place it is today. In fact, every place in Northern Ireland was different. The newspapers and TV screens were filled with stories of shootings, explosions and violence and every one of these events left their mark. Northern Ireland is a small place but the violence always struck close to home. We were divided on green and orange lines entrenched by opposing ideologies. Then the politicians negotiated and when they had a deal a copy of the Good Friday Agreement was sent to every home so that people could see their future and vote on it. It was the most progressive and positive political act in modern history. Yeah. Woo! So it was and so I it shall forever be. I am fortunate enough to have grown up without the fear of being bombed. Without the fear of losing a sibling in a terrorist attack in the pub and without the black cloud of violence looming over my head. Brexit threatens all of this. We all know the border is an issue that cannot be ignored. However, for people living in Northern Ireland, it is an invisible line onto which businesses, farms, people and social life have been able to seamlessly grow and prosper. One camera, one police officer or one customs post and it will turn into the perfect attack for paramilitaries who re want to reignite the violence. Yeah. I like so many in Northern Ireland, I'm a child of the peace process. Yet here we are, 20 years later, facing Brexit. We again are a nation divided, entrenched by opposing ideologies. Let's make sure we have our voices heard. Let's make sure our peace and prosperity is protected. And let's make sure we get a people's vote. Yeah. Southerners, and thank you for having me on your stage today. I'm Alice, I'm from near Hull in the mighty Yorkshire. Yay! A place where the beer is cheaper, the people are way friendlier, and we have white fern boxes. But those aren't the only differences between East Yorkshire and London. We're a city built on shipping, facing out towards Europe and the rest of the world. It doesn't always feel like the world is looking back. We're a city that has education rates that are low, investment rates that are low, and employment rates that are low. And to be honest, often our optimism about the future is even lower. And that's why places like where I grew up voted leave. And because the Brexit elite promised us investment in our public services, promised us investment in our worldwide shipping trade, promised us the hope that comes with taking back control. And where are those promises today? <laughs> the Brexiters are silent. Frankly, the quieter than a Londoner 
on the underground. <laughs> but it doesn't need to be this way. Just because the likes of Boris Johnson, Jacob Rees-Mogg think that they can mug off the North, we are not going to take it lying down. Because we know a hard truth. The North remembers. <laughs> and that is why the tide is changing. The momentum is on our side. Make no mistake, winning a people's vote is the challenge of our generation, but it's a fight that is worth fighting. Because yes. we are fighting for the mighty Yorkshire. We're fighting for our generation, and we're fighting for all our future's sake. Thank you. From Hamza, good afternoon. I'm Carmen and I'm from Wales. Why are you here today? Hope for a better future, to change the course of history, to deliver the democratic people's vote we demand and deserve. From every corner of the country we have travelled here and together we cannot, we will not be ignored. I'm from Ennis Morn, an island, a beautiful island in North Wales, from a nation where the roads are long and the valleys wide. And the journey we have travelled together has been taxing, not just on coaches and cars to get here today, but in six months. Look, look how far we have come. And it's because no matter where you're from, we can see that the Brexit being delivered is a million miles away from what was once promised. Because the Brexit elite, the pale, male and stale, told young activists, young women like me, to sit down and shut up. But hell have no fury like a woman ignored. They told all of you that the fight was over, the cause lost. Well, let's tell them that the people here today have a very different view. A fortnight ago, I proudly witnessed my party, Plaid Cymru, the party of Wales, overwhelmingly support a people's vote. Because we know that Brexit will hit the vulnerable the hardest for the longest. Women bearing the brunt of Boris Johnson's shortcomings. People of colour living with the consequences of Nigel Farage's lies. The working classes living in Jacob Rees-Mogg's brave old world. <laughs> Democracy means we do not have to accept their vision of the world. So, to all of you, I say, let's fight. Let's fight for a better future. At Flair's Devodal Palp, for all our future's sake. Hello, London! I know many of you have travelled from far and wide to be here today. And as you can probably tell from the accent, I have too. I was raised in the ex-mining communities of Fife, but my reasons for supporting a people's vote run much deeper than being just a proud Scot. Like many of you, I have a personal stake in Brexit too. For my Danish flatmate, my German partner, my family, fellow students and my community. Every single one of us here knows someone with something to lose. Yeah. Woo! And it doesn't matter if you voted leave or remain or were part of the 1.4 million that didn't have a say at all. You matter, your voice matters. We all have a stake in this country's future and we all share an anger at what's happening right now. We all know the gap from the promises of two years ago to the reality of now is longer than the front to the back of this march. Let me tell you, from this stage, 
This is a bloody big march. 570 days of negotiation and what to show for it? 28 months of pain. It's not good enough. So why does all this matter? The Brexit elite say it's time to get over it. Time to move on. Try telling that to Fife's factory workers whose jobs are now on the line. Try telling that to the NHS and all under its care who daily depend on EU staff. Try telling that to the faces of young people up and down the country whose futures have been traded away. Make no mistake, history is being written right here, right now. What will our children read about? You decide. So uh, we started this section with the short video and I'm very happy to say we're going to end it with a short video. Please put your hands together and join me in giving a very warm welcome to Scotland's First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon. Oh, yes! I'm really sorry that I can't be with you in person today, but I wanted to send my very best wishes. And let me say this loudly and clearly. If the issue comes before the House of Commons, SNP MPs will support a people's vote which includes the option to remain in the EU. The Leave campaign has already gone down in history as one of the most disingenuous, dishonourable and downright dishonest electoral contests of modern times. Those responsible should be utterly ashamed of themselves. Instead of a coherent vision and a clear prospectus setting out what a vote to leave the EU would mean, all we got instead was waffle and the infamous lie on the side of a bus. Incredible as it seems, things since then have got even worse. The Tory government's handling of these negotiations has been chaotic, incompetent and shambolic. Having spent two years telling us that no deal is better than a bad deal, the Prime Minister is now preparing to pile pressure on MPs to vote for a bad or blindfold deal on the grounds that no deal will be catastrophic. She's trying to scare the UK into the frying pan out of fear of the fire. It is a scandal and it should not be accepted. Of course, Scotland has already voted overwhelmingly to remain in the EU. Our vote in 2016 was the most decisive of any of the UK's four nations. That vote should be respected now and the SNP will work to ensure that Scotland's voice is heard in any future vote. I hope we will have your moral support on that. But despite our deep disquiet at Scotland's voice being ignored, we will back a people's vote. We will do so out of solidarity for our friends across the UK and because we believe it is the right thing to do. Let's be clear, there is no such thing as a jobs first Brexit. The SNP will continue to argue that the UK should stay in the single market and customs union as the least damaging option, but there is no guarantee that will happen. And of course, there is no deal, none, which provides all of the same benefits as EU membership. You just heard from four young people from all parts of the UK. Make no mistake, it is their future which is now at stake. And they deserve a much better, more hopeful future than this sorry Brexit mess. That's why the SNP will support a people's vote. Please accept my best wishes and my solidarity for a successful day.